Hello and welcome to Sew Amelia, my channel where I talk all about making a handmade wardrobe for me and my children. Welcome to this week's video, which is all about some plans for things I want to sew up in December. I cannot believe we are in December already, this year really has flown by and I am glad that we're coming into the Christmas season. I love that it's filled with so much light and family time. It's a really special time of the year and one of my favorite holidays as well. So we have lots of fun family activities planned. We have some Christmas school fairs, we have some trips to go to Santa's Grotto, and just some family outings to go and see the lights in Oxford Street, which is always good fun. And I'm hoping to sneak a trip to Liberty whilst I'm in town as well. We'll see how that goes down with my children. <laughs> so thank you for coming and watching today. I'm going to share just a couple of plans for this month because we are going to be quite busy doing lots of holiday activities. I'm not sure how much time I will get to sew. So I just have a few little plans for this month. Now, I don't know about you, but when it starts to get cooler in the evenings, the first thing I want to do when I come home is put on my pajamas. <laughs> and that's all well and good, but I would really like to have some other kind of loungewear that I can wear in the evenings instead of my pajamas. And recently, True Bias was having a sale on their Hudson pants and I decided to buy the pattern. I've seen it so much all over Instagram and I must be the last sewist to have a go at this pattern. So my first plan for December is to sew up a pair of the True Bias Hudson pants. Now I'm sure you have seen these everywhere as they have been very, very popular, but they are a fitted jogger pant. They've got a bit of looseness around the hip, but then they have got a tapered leg, which goes to the ankle for view A, or view B is a cropped mid-calf version as well. So the Hudson pants come in sizes 0 to 18. Size 0 is a waist of 26 inches and hips of 34 inches. And size 18 is a waist of 38.5 inches and hips of 46.5 inches. Now my waist is 30 inches, which places me in a size 8. And my hips are 41 inches, which places me into a size 14. So I am going to need to do some grading of the pattern. And because there is such a difference between my waist and hips, I may well just look at the taper on those trousers and perhaps make them slightly wider at the cuff, perhaps grading out to a size 16 at the cuff, just to give myself a little bit of balance because of my waist and hip proportions. I need a little bit more balance in a tapered leg and I need that to be a bit more wide at the bottom, I think. So I'm looking forward to playing around with that pattern a little bit in December and seeing if I can make myself um, a lovely, comfy, cozy pair of jogging bottoms. Recently, Charlene, who is so so dressmaking on YouTube and Instagram, shared a sweatshirting fabric she bought from the rag shop, and when I saw it, I thought it would be perfect for some warm jogging bottoms. And it's this grey fleece backed jersey from the rag shop. It's just a lovely, simple grey colour. It will go with a lot of the frayer tops that I'm starting to introduce to my wardrobe and some of my comfy cosy jumpers as well. And you can see on the reverse, it's a lovely cosy fleece backed jersey. So I'm really excited about making a pair of comfy jogging bottoms in this fabric. So the next plan I have for December is to make the wardrobe by me Asta dress. Now this is a lovely pattern and it has so many different options for how you put this dress together. It is a knit dress pattern. To start with, it has three different necklines. So there is a turtleneck, a round neck, and a boat neck option for the neck. Then there are two sleeve options. There's a straight sleeve or a bell sleeve. And then you can make those sleeves full length, three quarter length, or you can in fact make this a sleeveless dress. Now the bodice is fitted, and then the skirt is a four gourd A-line skirt, which they describe as being a half circle. So I think it will work really well for a pear-shaped figure, and I'm really looking forward to giving this a go. I'm going to be making it with the boat neck and with the full straight sleeves. Now the pattern suggests you make this in a mid-weight jersey, like a cotton jersey, a wool jersey, or a viscose jersey. It also suggests ITY or poly, but I have a viscose jersey that came in my most recent So Haley Jane box, and it is this gorgeous one here. So if you've seen some unboxings, you will know that there were four different colorways of this fabric, and I received this colorway, and I just love these two colors together with the pink and the burgundy red color. I think that's really amazing. And I think this will look really nice as the Asta dress because the clean lines of the pattern will I think really lend themselves to showing off this large scale print fabric. Now that pattern in terms of sizing comes in sizes 0 to 24. 
Size 0 is a bust of 30.5 inches, waist of 22.5 inches, and hips of 33.5 inches. And the size 24 is a bust of 48.5 inches, waist of 40.5 inches, and hips of 51.5 inches. And looking at the finished measurements, there is a negative ease across the bust, so that is a really nice fitted bodice, and it is fitted at the waist and then it flares out over the hips. So I'm not too concerned about the hip measurements, but I will make sure it's fitted at the waist and has a little negative ease across the bust when I check those sizes and decide which one to make. Now the third plan is an interesting one for me. It's a style that's quite different to that that I usually make. And it comes from seeing lots of these slip dresses on the high street lately. I love the way that people are layering them over turtlenecks or over big cozy fluffy jumpers or indeed putting big fluffy cozy jumpers over the top of a light slip dress with some boots and I really like that look and I wanted to give it a go for myself. So this pattern was gifted to me by Minerva in exchange for a blog and it is the new look 6347. Now I know that there are some very popular slip dresses in the indie pattern world at the moment and I would maybe love to give them a go at some stage but this pattern I think has some definite similarities to those patterns. I'm planning on making view E and that really is just a simple slip dress with thin straps. It's not cut on the bias, it's simply a straight cut dress with some darts. So I just thought I would give that a go, it's a lovely simple straightforward pattern and I will see if I like the look of the slip dress on me before perhaps I invest in one of the indie patterns and give them a go. So this particular pattern comes in sizes 10 to 22 and that's US sizes. So a size 10 is a bust of 32 and a half inches, a waist of 25 inches and hips of 34 and a half inches and the size 22 is a bust of 44 inches waist of 37 inches and hips of 46 inches and although my measurements place me in a size 14 for the bust a size 16 for my waist and a size 18 for my hips looking at the finished garment measurements that's going to give me an awful lot of ease across the bust and I think that these dresses need to be fitted at the bust and then to ease over the hips and the waist. So I've looked at the finished garment measurements really carefully and I have decided to make a size 10 over the bust and waist and then I have graded that out to a 14 over the hips. Now I'm not sure if that's a little bit too big but I am going to twirl it first and see how it fits and the fabric I've decided to use for my wearable twirl is my So Hayley Jane fabric from October's box. I wasn't sure exactly what to make with this at first but then when I thought about a slip dress I thought it would be really a nice one for the winter as I can layer over a black turtleneck or a white turtleneck or I could wear my lovely white and black cozy fluffy jumpers over the top of this one because of the colours and the pattern. I think that will work really well. If this wearable twirl does turn out indeed to be wearable, I do have another beautiful fabric lined up to make the slip dress in. So I'm hoping to be able to make the final version with another fabric which I will share in January's plans video because I'm not sure I'll get around to it until then. So I'm hoping this will be wearable because I think it would be a really easy piece to add to my winter wardrobe and I'm looking forward to giving this pattern a go and just getting out of my comfort zone a little bit with what I am making and the styles that I'm adding to my wardrobe. Now if you watched the video with my birthday haul in it you will have seen that I received this book from my family, 50 Fat Quarter Makes. Now there are some projects in here that I'm really excited to make in the future but there are also a couple of really lovely practical projects and the first one that I want to have a go at this month is some fabric gift bags. So it's this project here and I'm really looking forward to giving that a go with some of the fat quarters from my So Haley Jane box and some of my fabric scraps because I've been looking for a more sustainable way to gift wrap my presents this year and I think that will be a really lovely way of doing it, making some fabric bags and then hopefully the recipient can reuse those either for themselves or to gift their presents to others. The second thing I'm going to be making from this book this month as a gift is this quirky pencil case. I love the way the zip goes diagonally across the bag instead of just straight across and I think that will make a really sweet gift for my second son. He is only five and he's just starting to really enjoy writing and reading and I think he'll really appreciate a little mummy made pencil case to keep all of his pencils and pens in that he gets out to work diligently at the table. So I'm looking forward to making that for him and popping it under the tree for him as one of his Christmas gifts. 
So that's it from me for this month. Just a few makes and a few gifts to start working away on. But December does get so busy with all of these festivities and I'm so looking forward to partaking in those this year after last year's rather more quiet Christmas. So do let me know in the comments below what you're working on this month and if you've got any gifts that you're planning to make for other people. I do enjoy sewing for others from time to time and especially at Christmas, I think handmade gifts are so special. If you enjoyed today's video, I would love it if you could give it a thumbs up and if you could subscribe to my channel, that would be really wonderful as well. I do hope you have a very happy week of sewing and I shall see you in the next video. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.